Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic of the Gathering Market Watch. There is a lot happening this week. First off, the Neon Dynasty Championship is going on. I'm sure that's going to bring some attention to cards over the course of the weekend. Also, there is just an update to the Banned and Restricted list, and that is having an impact on some card prices. You're going to see that later in the video. And the big theme again this week is Kamigawa Neon Dynasty brought a lot of new cards to the environment. Players are trying to put together certain commander decks especially. And that is spiking a lot of cards. Quickly before we get into it though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order the 2022 Standard Challenger decks there. And they have a whole lot of other things on their website too. Remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's begin with the standard legal spotlight. Now, these are standard legal cards moving the most this week. Again, the threshold for this video is $2. We're not going to talk about anything unless it's moving up or down at least $2 today. First, we have a card going down. It is the Meat Hook Massacre, but it is the one from Innistrad Double Feature. This copy was really inflated last week. This week, it is normalizing down $13.70 to $60, still maybe a little bit high. However, there is another copy going up. The Meat Hook Massacre from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. This one is up 214 this week to $50.25. This is seeing standard play. It's in Orzhov Midrange, Orzhov Control, and much more. Pioneer, you'll see this in Jun Sacrifice, and it is seeing increased commander play in Tetsunari Toad Rider and Go Shintai of Life's Origin decks. The first of two Neon Dynasty cards on the list today. This is March of Otherworldly Light. This goes up 435 this week to 699 And this is seeing a lot of play. In standard, it's in Azorius Control, Esper Control, and much more. Pioneer, you'll find this in Azorius Control, Esper, Grease Fang, and more there. This is even seeing modern play in Four Color Omnith, sometimes Orzhov Blank, Azorius Control, and more there too. I did see that Aspiring Spike did a video for Channel Fireball last week testing this card in a Bant Control deck. I'm sure that brought some attention to it as well. And this is another card that's seeing a lot of Commander play. It's in Light Paws Emperor's Voice, Ishin 2 Heavens is 1, in Not a Dawn Crowned, and many other builds old and new. Plus, it's a good upgrade to the Buckle Up Commander deck. And finally for this section, we have the Wandering Emperor. This is up 1439 to 2938, and this is a huge card right now. Big standard card, seeing play in other environments as well, though. And it did get a special shout-out during the Neon Dynasty Championship coverage yesterday. Again, if there wasn't enough attention on this card, that could bring some more. But in standard right now, you're going to find this in Mono White Aggro, Orzov Midrange, Azorius Orzov, and Esper Control, and much more. Pioneer, it's in Azorius Control. Modern, also in Azorius Control and Bant Control, and it is getting a good amount of commander play too. It's in Ishin, it's in Ryu Storm's Edge, and other builds old and new. And that quickly takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. Again, one card going down in value, then we have some going up. Hollow Fountain, the original one from Dissension, is down 215 this week to 2313. And this is seeing a little retraction after some recent increases, but it is a shock land, so you know it's going to see play in a lot of different builds in a number of formats. You see this frequently in Pioneer, Modern, and of course it's in many Commander builds, old and new. Days Undoing from Magic Origins, up $2 to $15. Now it is worth noting this was added to the list with Crimson Vow, still there for Neon Dynasty. Pioneer, and especially Modern, got a pretty big shakeup with the banning of Luris of the Dream Den this week. So just keep that in mind as we go through the video today. First off in Pioneer, you do see this in Isn't Control. In Legacy, it's in Jeskai, as well as Bant Control. And it does get a little Commander play too. Starfield of Nyx, this is up 214 this week to 1720. Good in enchantment heavy commander builds like Sithis Harvest Hand. And Sithis is getting more play now due to the enchantment focus in Neon Dynasty. This is also in some new builds like Goshintai of Life's Origin and Setsuki the Living Lore. Kaikara Wins Fury, this is up 244 to 1064. Another popular card in the commander format. Many times you see this as a commander, but it is also in a new build around a card from Neon Dynasty. That is Hinata. Aurelia the War Leader from Gate Crash is up 410 this week to 2840. Again, a card seeing more commander play. This is in Ishin builds. And now we are at the modern legal spotlight. So let's see some cards going down in value and then some going up. Higuri the Still Win. This is the copy from Playing Chase 2012. It's down 293 this week to 2418. And it is down after some recent increases. 
Of course, ninjas in general did get hot because of the support that they found in Neon Dynasty. This is in Commander Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, and those builds are seeing a lot more play now. Plus, this is in some other new builds like Satoru Umazawa and Tatsunari. Savage Beating. I remember when this card was going up every single week. It goes down this week, 313 to $30. This was very hot for a long time because it was getting play in Commander Tovalar Dire Overlord slash Tovalar the Midnight Scourge decks. Of course, it has been a couple sets now since that card came out, and players are moving on to other things. You do see this occasionally, though, in Ishin Commander builds. Reliquary Tower. The copy from Commander Anthology Volume 2 goes down 316 this week to 468. This is a huge Commander card found in many builds, including a lot of the new ones coming out of Neon Dynasty, but it was just reprinted in the Heads I Win, Tales You Lose Secret Layer Commander deck. Hey guys, Servant of Oni, this is down 404 to 3462, but this is the Plane Chase 2012 copy. There's a different copy going up in value. You're going to see that later in the video. Again, worth noting that this was added to the list with Neon Dynasty. So this did jump in price recently, and this week you're seeing this copy retracting some. The two places this used to see the most commander play was Yuriko and Maronar. Both of those decks see more play now with Neon Dynasty coming out. But this is also in some builds around new cards. Satoru, Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. As a matter of fact, that particular build was talked about on a Telerian Community College video, and they did mention this card. Could have brought some attention to it. Also, this is in Grease Fang, Okiba Boss, and Tatsunari. Chalice of the Void from Meriden goes down 435 this week to $60.41. Now, this has been a huge card in modern decks. But now with Luris leaving the format, this might not be as critical in the future, and you do see the price beginning to dip. It does continue to get a fair amount of legacy and vintage play. You'll find it in a number of decks in those formats. Plus, it gets a little commander play, too. And the last card going down in value is Blood Moon from the Dark, the original one. Down again this week, it is down 476 to 98.99, back under $100. So this got hot again recently, as a lot of people were looking at the Dark cards that trend has subsided a little bit over the last few weeks, and this has gone back down. Worth noting, too, this was added to the list with Crimson Vow, and it did stay on for Neon Dynasty. Plus, it also got a reprint in the Mischief Secret Layer. And Blood Moon does see a good amount of play. In Modern, it's in Murktide Regent, Crashing Footfalls, and much more. Legacy, it's in Jeskai Control, Blood Moon Aggro, and more there, too. And it gets Commander play in a number of decks, including Krenko Mob Boss. Painter Servant from Shadowmoor is back again. It goes up 491 this week to 7995. This is in Legacy Painter, and that has been a more popular deck in the format since Ragavan Nimble Pilfer was banned there. This also gets a little commander play. Ranger Captain of Eos from Modern Horizons up 703 to 2514, and this is a card that is poised to see more modern play now that Luris is gone. You'll find it currently in Slesnia Life Gain, Boros Midrange, Mardu Midrange. It's also another card found many times in Commander Sithis and Hinata. Yet another card that's value is going up because of the absence of Luris in the modern format. This is Murktide Regent. It's up 840 to 2706. Of course, in modern, this is in Murktide Regent decks. Also in Is It Control and more. Legacy, you'll see this in Is It Delver, Stifle Knot, and more there. And in Vintage, sometimes this even shows up in Is It Tempo. Plus, it does see a little commander play too. Here's a card that was really hurt by Luris being in the format, but now that it's gone, it's starting to jump up again. Liliana of the Vale. In a stride up 622 to 7199, the Modern Masters 2017 copy of 919 to 7389 and the Ultimate Masters copy of $9.88 to $75. You can already see signs of this making a comeback showing up again in some Jun decks as well as 8-Rack. It does get some commander play as well in Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern, for example. And finally, another card that was pushed out of modern decks because of Luris. This is Seasoned Pyromancer. It is up $17.38 this week to $50. Already in modern, this is making more appearances in Gruul and Mardu Midrange. It's also in Jun, sometimes Crashing Footfalls, and much more. Also gets a little commander play, too. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. Remember, in this section of the video, the prices you're going to see on the screen are going to be reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. And that's due to the fact that many of these cards don't see a whole lot of sales over the course of a week. So we do have to lean a little bit harder on asking price. Also remember, when it comes to these harder to find cards, the more iconic older ones many times are graded. So the prices you see might be somewhere in between a high-grade raw and a high-grade graded copy. Just keep that in mind. But if the price on the screen is not matching up with what I'm seeing for recent sales, I will point that out. Caracas from Eternal Masters is up 314 this week to 4375. Now this is Bandit Commander, so it's not going up because of that format. But it does get a lot of legacy play. It's in Death and Taxes, Lands, and much more. Vintage, you'll see this in Orzov Agro and Prison Shops. 
Plateau from revised up 332 to 34732. Not a big percentage increase this week, but this is one of two revised dual lands going up, which is unusual. They have been quiet lately. Here's the second revised dual. It is Scrubland. It's up 502 to 369. Sensei's Divining Top, the copy from the list, is up 573 to 6983 as it tries to find its price point. It was just added to the list with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. In Vintage, you'll find this in four color Tinker, Paradoxical Outcome, and more. In Commander, this is a good upgrade for Buckle Up. It's also in fresh builds around a card from there, Shori Kai Genesis Engine. This is often found in Yuri Codex as well. And it's in builds around new cards from Neon Dynasty 2, the Reality Chip. Satoru and Hinata. Ring of Maruf, this is up $33.44 this week to $203.85. King Suleiman, this is up $36 to $384.99. Birds of Paradise from Unlimited, up $41.64 to $277.95. Nev Inneral's Disc from Unlimited, up $55.58 to $250.78. Mishra's Factory, this is the fall variation from Antiquities, the one you see on the screen. It's up $160.38 to $599.98. Is that for real, though? Well, this price is inflated. High-grade raw copies usually can maybe just break 200 I have not seen a high-grade grade a copy sell for a while, but if one did sell, unless it was in really high grade, I don't really see it hitting this price point. Time Vault from Unlimited up 332.20 to $2,163.17. In reality, high-grade graded copies have sold for around this price. High-grade raws can break 1000 And finally for this section, Jazam Jin. This is up 1296.01 to $4,259.99. So again, is this price jump real? Well, high-grade raw copies sell for about $3,350 or so. High-grade graded copies can sell for more than that. And recently, a 10 sold for about $7,800. But of course, those are very rare. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. So all the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander, but there could be some other key drivers too, and I'll let you know as we go through. Minamo School at Water's Edge from Champions of Kamigawa. This is up $2 to $25. In Commander, this is a good upgrade for Buckle Up, and I have seen this in fresh builds around a couple cards from there. Shori Kai and Kotori Pilot Prodigy. This is also found in Sise Weatherlight Captain Shrine decks, which are popular right now due to the new shrines from Neon Dynasty. Additionally, this is in Yuriko, and I have seen this in another new build too, Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Treachery is up $2 to $76.49, and of course this does get some commander play in a variety of decks. Exquisite Blood, the copy from the list is up $208 to $39.49. This was added with Crimson Vow, still there for Neon Dynasty. Also, it was recently reprinted in the Secret Layer, Welcome to Castle Dracula. Huge commander card and combo enabler in the format, though, and it is seeing some more play now in Tetsunari builds. Martin Stromgald, this is up $214 to $1402. And this is seeing increased commander play in Ishin builds. Bear Umbra. Now, this is the copy from the Neon Dynasty Upgrades Unleashed Commander deck. It's up 216 this week to 649. I have seen this in some fresh commander builds around a couple cards from there. Shishiro the Shattered Blade and Kosai Pentatent Warlord. You also see this in Sithis commander decks as well as Tatsunari. And this week, the Command Zone podcast did a video about a Tatsunari commander build, and they did mention this card. Temporal Manipulation from Portal Second Age. It's up 219 this week to 5443. It was on the list from Zendikar Rising through Modern Horizons 2, and it is seeing more commander play now. It is found in Yuriko, also in Tamishi Reality Architect, and Jinga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Oathkeeper Takino's Die Show is up 221 to 1515, and this is seeing more commander play now in Ishin, and to a lesser degree, Ryu and Rasona Asari Commander. The original Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Rise of the Eldrazi is up 222 to 7499. This was on the list for Strixhaven and Modern Horizons 2. This does see more commander play now in Satoru, Ishin, and it is in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post 2. Necropotence, the copy from Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel, it's up 223 to 119.18. This particular copy only comes in foil. Now, this has seen more commander play recently in Tatsunari. It was mentioned in that Command Zone podcast video I talked about earlier. It's also in Satoru as well as Nashi, and it was mentioned in the Telerian Community College video I talked about earlier too, and this is also in Vintage Doomsday. Replenish is up 225 this week to 12054. Great card for enchantment heavy commander builds like Sithis. This is also showing up in deck lists now around new Neon Dynasty cards, Goshintai of Life's Origin, Light Paws, and Satsuki. Sword of Fire and Ice from Darksteel, it's up 231 this week to 6269. This is a good upgrade to the Upgrades Unleashed deck, also in fresh builds around Shishiro and Kosai. I have seen this in Ishin Commander decks too. In modern, this could get a little more play with Loris no longer in the format. 
It is in Death and Taxes, sometimes stopped your combo and more. Drown in Dreams. This is from the Innistrad Midnight Hunt Undead Unleashed Commander deck. It's up 235 this week to 744, and it is seeing increased commander play now in Hinata, and to a lesser degree, Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Avacyn, Angel of Hope from Avacyn Restored, up 235 to 4495, and this is a solid commander, also in the 99 of a lot of decks like Sithis. Plus, it's a good upgrade to buckle up, or good in a fresh build around Shorikai. It does appear that Angels will play a role in Streets of New Capenna, so maybe this card will get even better in the future. Consecrated Sphinx from Mirrodin Besieged is up 240 to 4755. Seeing more commander play now in Satoru. Also, to a lesser degree, Jin Gitaxius Progress Tyrant. Bruce Tarl, Borish Herder from Commander 2016. It's up 245 to 1189. This copy only comes in foil. It has been a popular partner commander for a long time now, and it is seeing more play in Ishin decks, and to a lesser degree in Tana the Bloodsower, slash Yoshimaru Ever Faithful decks. Seed of the Synod, the copy from Playing Chase is up 252 this week to 674. Great upgrade to buckle up. Also in fresh builds around Shorikai and Kotori. Plus, it is in other new builds. Tamishi, Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant, and the Reality Chip. In Legacy, you'll see this in 8-cast Affinity. In Vintage, it's also in 8-cast there. Now, what's interesting is this week, Disciple of the Vault was banned in Popper, which will impact Affinity strategies, but this card should still get a lot of play there in more than one build. Sea Chrome Coast from Scars of Mirrodin is up 255 to 1808. Another good upgrade to buckle up or a card to put in a fresh build around Shorikai or Katori. In Modern, this is a solid mana base card in Thopter Combo, sometimes Affinity, and more. Eladomri, Lord of Leaves, is up 259 to 8358. Great for Commander Elf builds like Lathro Blade of the Elves. Shizo Death Storehouse from Champions of Kamigawa goes up 262 to 3988. This is rebounding from a small loss last week. It is a solid commander card in a number of builds like Yuriko, and new commander decks too like Satoru, Ishin, and Nashi. Again, this is another card that was mentioned in that Tolarian Community College video. Now it is worth noting that this might see less modern play going forward with the Luris ban. Sensei Golden Tail, the one from the list that was there from Zendikar Rising through Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It's up 264 this week to 1004, seeing more commander play in Ishin, Ryu, and Light Paws. Exploration from Urza Saga of 269 this week to 4996. This is in Commander Sithis builds, also in Goshintai of Life's Origin, Tatsunari, and in Legacy, you'll see this in Lands. Gilded Drake, another card seeing more Commander play. You'll find this in some Yuriko builds, also in Satoru and Hinata. It's up 270 this week to 332.99. Blatant Thievery, the original copy from Onslaught, up 272 to 979. This does get more Commander play as well. It's in Hinata and to a lesser degree, Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant and Kyrie the Swirling Sky. Daybreak Coronet, Ultimate Masters up 248 to 1120, Modern Masters 2015 up 272 to 1284. This is in Commander Synthesis at times, and again, it's in some new decks too. Light Paws Emperor's Voice, and to a lesser degree, Norika Yamakaze the Poet. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage, this is up 275 to 104.49. This does get some commander play, it can be found in Salvala Heart of the Wilds, for example. Also, it's in Legacy Stifle Knot. Volrath Stronghold up 275 to 11735. It does get more commander play too. I'm seeing this in some mission decks. Razorclaw Bear, yet to be reprinted. Hard to find in high grade online. This is in Commander Ayula, Queen Among Bears builds. It's up 280 this week to 4660. Urza Lord High Artificer from Modern Horizons up 288 to 5735. Popular commander, but in the 99 of builds too. Another good upgrade to buckle up. Also in fresh builds around Shorikai and Kotori. Plus, this is in another new build, Jin Gitaxius Progress Tyrant. In Modern, though, it's in Thopter Combo, Affinity, Vintage, you'll find this in 8-cast, sometimes Paradoxical Outcome, too. Here's that other copy of Inkai Servant of Oni, I promise it is the original from Betrayers of Kamigawa. It is up 291 this week to 3910. Unwinding Clock, the copy from Commander 2018, it's up 296 this week to $33. Now, this did join the list with Crimson Vow still there during Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. And it is another good upgrade to buckle up. Plus, I've seen this in fresh builds around Shorikai and Kotori. And it's in Jinga Taxius Progress Tyrant, too. Mox Opal Modern Masters 2015, up $2 to $59.97. The Double Masters copy is up $350 to $60.46. Yet another good upgrade to say it with me now, buckle up. And in fresh builds around Shorikai. And it's in other new builds, too. Hinata, Tamishi, The Reality Chip, Jinga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, along with Yoshimaru. Plus, it's his legacy play. It's an 8-cast painter and more there. Vintage, it's in Paradoxical Outcome. Agro Shops, an 8-cast. 
It tracks the Praetor's voice, the Commander 2016 copy. This one only comes in foil. It's up 394 this week to 3840. Very popular Commander, and it's in the 99 of some builds too, including Go Shintai of Life's Origin and Sisei Weather like Captain Shrine Dex. Unmask from Mercadian Mask. This is up 434 this week to 2899. Now, this is getting reprinted in the Introducing Kaito Shizuki Secret Layer, so that's worth noting. It does get a little commander play, but this is really moving now because of Legacy. It is in Reanimator there. Gemstone Caverns, the copy from the list. It's up 450 this week to 3275. Added with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, but it is still there going into Neon Dynasty. This is in many Commander Yuriko builds, also in some new decks like Satoru, Light Paws, Hinata, Arden and Yoshimaru. Plus, I have seen some people add this to Buckle Up, also in fresh builds around Shorikai, and in modern it sees playing Crashing Footfalls, Dredge, and more. Argothian Enchantress from Urza Saga this time is up 457 to 4899. This is in Commander Sithis and other new builds too. Go Shintai of Life's Origin, Tetsunari. It was mentioned in that Command Zone podcast video talking about Tetsunari. It's in Satsuki as well. Plus, it is a good upgrade to Upgrades Unleashed this time. And you do see this in fresh builds around Shishiro and Kaima the Fractured Calm. In Legacy, it's in Enchantress. Chrome Mox, the Eternal Masters copy up to $45 to $80.93. The Double Masters copy up $466 to $87.63. So you do see this in many commander builds, including, again, Yuriko, and new builds like Satoru, Hinata, Light Paws. It is expensive, but it is a good upgrade to buckle up if you happen to have one, or maybe you want to throw it in a fresh build around Shorikai. Plus, it gets Legacy Play. It's in the Epic Storm, Blood Moon Aggro, and more, and you'll see this in Vintage Goblins. Cover of Darkness of 508 to $55. This is a popular card to put in Commander Yuriko. It's also an Ishin and Satoru. Opal Archangel, this is up 673 this week to 2324. I have seen this in a Ghost Shintai of Life's Origin Commander build. And like I said, it does look like angels are going to be featured in some way in Streets of New Capenna. But ultimately, this just looks and feels like a reserveless buyout. Maybe those things I mentioned are part of the speculation which caused the buyout, but maybe not. Seeds of Innocence is up 765 this week to $29. Now, this does get a tad bit of commander play. It also has been seen in some legacy sideboards here or there in different builds that deal with Urza's Saga, but it is a reserveless card too. Perhaps this is the start of a buyout. Herborg Justice, sure, this does get a tab of commander play, but again, it looks and feels like another reserveless buyout. It is up 844 this week to 2997. Last card in this section, Wandering Mage, is up 1749 to 1968. Now, this doesn't really see any play to speak of. And it does look like another reserve list buyout, but is there any reason someone might be interested in this? Well, we recently found out that one of the crime families in Streets of New Capenna is going to be called Obscura, and they are going to be based in Esper colors, and it does sound like wizards could be involved. This happens to be a wizard in Esper colors, maybe that's why it was targeted, but ultimately it was clearly targeted for a buyout. And that takes us to the premium spotlight. So much like the vintage section, the prices you see in this part of the video are going to be very similar to what you might see on a price tracking website. Again, because these cards don't necessarily get a lot of sales over the course of a week. And like I say every week, I try to pick at least a couple cards that are premium cards doing something that I think is interesting in the market. There's always cards going up and down. Many of them are spiking wildly, but I try to avoid buyouts. I try to avoid things that are just dry for a week. This week, I did select two cards to look at. The first is Days Undoing, the foil from Magic Origins, in theory going up $18 to $57.98 this week. Is that for real? Well, high-grade copies can sell for about $35. This price does seem a little high. This could be sellers just pricing the card a little higher to stay ahead of the increases. But remember, in most cases, they would still take a reasonable offer. And finally, we have the Treachery Foil from Urza's Destiny. So in theory, this is going up $33 to $583. Pretty expensive card. Is that real? Well, high-grade raw copies can sell between $300 and $400, and a high-grade graded copy did hit $1,200 recently. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. And again, I want to thank everybody for helping us get to that 50,000 subscriber milestone. That is huge for the channel. I never thought we would get here. When I first started doing these videos and making this channel, one of my inspirations was the old price guides from when I was a kid. Scry Magazine and Inquest. I used to love looking at those things, and even outside of Magic, I would look at the price guides like Wizard Magazine for comics, or Tough Stuff, or Beckett for sports cards. It was just fun to look through those, even though they were cards I probably never would own, or comics I never would own. And that's why I wanted to make these videos. For me, it's very casual. I don't buy, sell cards myself. I just think it's entertaining to follow what's going on out there, and I know many of you do too. 
So until next time, hey, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.